There might be some questions asked about the accounting theory in relation to prepaid and accrued expenses. So let's just talk about it a little bit and say, well, first of all, what are the balance day adjustments we're going to need to make? And we said there's pr pretty much five. There's inventory gains and losses, which we've already done. Prepaid expenses and accrued expenses, which is this chapter. Depreciation, bad debts, and unearned revenue and accrued revenue. And for all of these, the accounting theory kind of says the same thing. We just want to apply it differently to each thing. So we'll start this time with prepaid and accrued expenses. But before we can do that, we kind of need to know what they are. So the best way to demonstrate how prepaid and accrued expenses worked are to talk about your phone. So your phone bill is usually paid in one of two ways. Some people have prepaid calls and data, whereas other people have a monthly plan each month that they pay. So let's deal with each of those. So let's take prepaid calls and data and say on the 1st of July, you prepay $90 for 90 gigs of calls and data. And on average, let's say you use around about 30 gigs of calls and data per month. So what we could say, if we look at, say, July, August, September, you've prepaid $90 here on the very first day of July for 90 gigabytes of data. Now, if we were using cash accounting, which we don't want to do, but if we did, uh, we'd say this. We'd say there's a $90 expense in July because that's when we paid it. Um, and then we'd say there's a $0 expense in August and September. And that makes no sense because it assumes that all the calls and data we used here, which they weren't, and then it assumes none will be used in August and September. So that's stupid. So what we do instead is we are going to use accrual accounting. What does that mean? It means that we should recognize a $30 expense for July because we're going to use a third of the data each month. We use 30 gigs each month. We've paid for 90. So we use $30 or 30 gigs in August and the same in September. Um, so yeah, that's more, uh, not, a, not realistic, but also more accurate. It's going to sort of match actually our usage with what, um, with what we're actually doing with the expense in this case. So what we'll do is we will say on the 1st of July, you have basically paid for an economic resource, which in this case would be your data and your calls and stuff, and you have not yet used it. It will be used up in the future. Now, when you have an economic resource that is going to be used in the future, we call that an asset. And in this case, it's going to be a current asset. Why? Well, because it meets the three criteria of a current asset. There is a present economic resource or benefit to be consumed within the next 12 months. What does that mean? It means the economic resource or benefit to you is you can make calls and data for July, August and September. It is controlled by you. No one else can use it. It's your data. It's your phone. It's legally controlled by you. And it was the result of a past event. On the 1st of July, you prepaid for three months worth of phone. So what we want to do with prepaid expenses is kind of look at it as a big tank of economic resource. So kind of like a swimming pool. And at the moment, the swimming pool has been filled with $90 or 90 gigs of economic resources or benefits. So on the day we pay it, on the 1st of July, we're going to assume the water level goes up to $90 in this case. And then what we want to do is we need to allocate the expense as we use it. That's what we're going to do with balance day adjustments in the next videos. What does that mean? It means that we should allocate a $30 expense or 30 gig of data, which will be used in July. We should take that out of the pool. We should say, well, the water level of the pool is actually going to go down to here. So there's $60 of current asset left because I've used $30 in July. And in August, same thing. I'm going to use $30 of, ex of the expense in August. So what we'll do is we'll decrease the water level and we'll recognize another expense for July. And the current asset will go down to $30. And then in the last month, September, we'll use the last 30 gig of data. And we'll have a $30 expense for September. And all of a sudden, we have no more current asset left. It's gone. We've used up all the economic benefits. But the point was, we kind of recognized an asset at the start when we paid it. And then we allocated an expense as we went. And by the end, we will have no economic resources or benefits left. We don't have an asset anymore. It's all gone. And we're going to say, even though this is a simple uh, example with your phone, this is how we are going to treat all the prepaid expenses of the business. What's the opposite of that? Well, that was when you have a phone plan with calls and data. How does that work? Well, let's say you signed up for a 24-month phone plan and you pay $50 a month and you get 50 gig of data and calls. But generally how that works is the, at the end of each month, you haven't actually paid for what you've used yet. You'll get the bill to pay, usually on the last day of the month, and it will say, can you please pay this by the 14th of the next month? What are we saying? Well, let's say in July, we're going to use our fit. We're on a plan. So we're going to use our $50 or 50 gig 
during July, but we're not going to pay for it until August the 14th in this case. And that's, I would think, most people are on a mobile phone plan. That's probably how it's going to work for you. Um, now, if we were using cash accounting, which we wouldn't, but it would be a bit stupid because we've used the data in July, but we haven't paid for it until August. We'd actually record the expense in August. We'd say there's no expense in July, and that's stupid. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't actually match how we use the phone. So what we should do is we should use accrual accounting. And what we should do is say, for the month of July, you've used an economic resource, your calls and data, but you've not yet paid for it. So we should say, you do have an expense for July, even though you haven't paid for it because you've used the calls and data during July. And what we should also do is say, well, that's also going to be a current liability. At the end of July, you have a present obligation to pay your phone bill. That's obviously within the next 12 months. It's going to be within 14 days. Secondly, you have an obligation to transfer an economic resource, which in this case will be cash. And lastly, there was a past event. You signed up for this phone plan and you used your data. So we need to recognize the expense in the month when it was actually incurred. And we're going to say, even again, this is a simple example, but that demonstrates kind of perfectly what we're going to call an accrued expense. So to summarize all that, what does the accounting theory say about this? So if we get a question saying, how does the accounting theory impact prepaid expenses and accrued expenses? Well, basically, we could say, first of all, the accrual basis assumption says that an expense should be allocated to the period in which it is incurred or consumed or used, depending on whatever word you want to use, but incurred just means consumed or used it. So an expense is allocated to when we incur or consume it and not when it was paid. What else? Well, the period assumption says, well, we should make some balance day adjustments, which we'll learn how to do next. And we'll do that to allocate an expense to its correct period. And that way, our net profit for that period can be calculated accurately. Now, we've got the most accurate net profit, then, then relevance and faithful representation says, if we calculate net profit accurate, accurately, the financial records of the business will ref reflect reality and it can make better decisions. So what we better do now is you look at some more serious examples for a business uh, in terms of prepaid and accrued expenses, and we'll move on to those in the next videos.